Hello everyone and welcome to this Prong Control app tutorial video. My name is Urs Recho, I'm a photographer at Prong Color. In an earlier video, I already explained how to set up your zeros and how to connect them to your iPad or mobile device. Well, that's what I've already done now. They are all in the same studio, which is today Studio 7, and they all have their independent lamp address. Lamp number one, two, three, and four. But at the end of the other video, I promised that I will have this video explaining what we can do with the more functions. And we have the possibility to go into a more menu on every single lampette. And we have a more menu as well in the studio. And now I wanna go through step by step through all the possibilities we have. Okay, so we start with uh, lamp number one. I go press more on my lamp number one, which is this one, power three. And let's say for a first step, I change the lamp address. So lamp number one will become lamp number two. What happens? So I press on the one, give it a two, press OK, and just wait one or two seconds until this information is actually transferred to the unit. As soon as this happens, I can leave here the menu. And now you can see that um, the first two lights, they have the, the green little square, which means they have the same lamp address. And you can see that there appears a group number two. So the two lights that have the same lamp address, two in this situation, they form a group two. And the big advantage is that now I can control the power of this group two and all the lights that, that are in this group two at the same time. For example, these two lights, they are the background. So basically I like the ratio between the, the lights. I like the gradations and everything, but it should be half an f-stop brighter. So I go into the menu of the group, change the power by half an f-stop. This is transferred. And now the two lights increased the power by half a stop. That's exactly what I want. Okay. I can go out again, of course, and then as well change the lights again independently if needed. If I don't need the groups anymore, I do the same, but the other direction. So I go again into the more menu of my light number one, press on two, give it again as at the beginning, lamp address one, press OK, wait until this information is transferred, leave the menu, and then my group does not exist anymore because I have four independent lights from now on again. Okay, what else can I do? Let's say I take light number two, go into the more menu, and we have seen lamp address, and there is as well lamp delay. Now what can I do with a lamp delay? I press on the time, I give it, let's say, a delay of two seconds. Okay, like always, wait one, two, maybe three seconds, and then I can leave the menu. Now what you can already see is that when I read, when I look here on the, uh, on the front panel, that my light number two has a little timer indication. And this is just a warning that, uh, that tells me, watch out, there is a delay um, that I'm aware of this um, function. So what happens if I press the test button now, if I actually shoot the picture, these three lights, they fire immediately and the, the delayed one, obviously by two or three seconds, whatever my delay is, just a little later. What can I use this for? Um, of course, you can very precisely define when the flash should trigger, when it should fire. Um, maybe rear shutter sync, um, that you first have some ambient light, some available light, and the flash at the end. Or let's say if we have different delays, very tiny differences in delays, maybe one hundredth of a second, two hundredths of a second, and so on. So but we have a very, very unbelievable fast uh, stroboscopic effect. Um, yes, this is exactly um, as well the, the precision of these delays. They can be adjusted by one hundredth of a second, so in very, very precise steps. Okay, so don't need uh, this delay anymore. So I'll go back into the more menu, press lamp delay, C for cancel, OK to transmit the data, wait, and then as soon as the little timer sign is gone, there's no more delay, all the flashes are firing at the same moment. Okay, that's everything I can program on the lamp heads individually, um, but there is, of course, a studio more function, and that's where we are going now. But before I go there, I would just like to reduce a little bit the, the power of my studio. Let's say we take 
this one down three stops, I take this one down two stops, because I will have a lot of flashes right now in the studio. Okay, I go into more menu and first I would like to program a sequence. I press the sequence button and let's say I would like to have five flashes. So I use the slider and I pre-program five flashes, press apply. Now every time I have a synchro signal, all the zeros will fire five times and the time in between two flashes, the interval is nothing else than the recycling time of the unit. Now I have here power 3.5, here I have power 6. Obviously this has a longer recycling time, that's why this, uh, let's say, pace will be slower. This will take longer until it's actually, uh, it has done all the five flashes. And like this, of course, I can use it, uh, the function to increase the amount of light I have, if I shoot furniture, if I shoot uh, interiors and so on. But if I have a fast moving object in the studio, it's important that I have all the flashes firing at the same time. Okay, so I have to synchronize this sequence somehow. I can't do this on the units directly, but I have to use the app for this. So again, I go into sequence and I add or I define a master. The master is always the unit which has the longest recycling time. And this is of course the one with the highest power setting. So this is my light number four, power setting six. So it, I define this one as my master, press apply. And now this light actually gives the rhythm of my sequence. And when I press the test button now again, they're all firing their five flashes in exactly the same rhythm. Okay, and like this I can capture very precisely stroboscopic effects. Maybe this rhythm is still too fast. Okay, so I actually can add as well a master pause to this. Um, let's say I would like to add half a second more. So I use master pause, take the slide to 0 0.5 seconds, press apply. And now when this unit is actually ready to shoot, it waits another half a second and then fires the flash. So my rhythm of the sequence is just a little bit more slowly. Okay, that's about the sequence. And I just take this out again, the slider all the way to the left, press apply, and this means that one flash only, we are back in normal. Next one would be speed. Speed means that we are putting the priority no longer on the perfect color, but on flash duration. So on speed, we are cutting the flash a little earlier. This means the flash duration becomes very short, so we can freeze even the fastest moving object in the studio. But the light becomes a little bit more bluish. So um, we actually should make a new gray balance when using speed mode, because the, yeah, as I said, the color balance is a little bit changed. But the flash duration is unbelievable short. Okay, let me uh, show you one thing. If, for example, I do something manually directly on the unit, for example, I take speed off here, which means I have three units in speed and one which is not in speed, then I will get an exclamation mark here on the app that tells me, hey, watch out, there's something happening. You have uh, some sort of asymmetry um, in your set. Some units are on speed, some others are not on speed. And to actually avoid this or to, to sync them, I just press speed. Now they're all off, press speed again. Now they're all on. So this little exclamation mark just gives an indication that you have some uneven, some different settings between the lamp heads. Okay. If you don't have fast moving object, if you shoot still lights or whatever, uh, we actually uh, use speed off. This means that uh, the priority of the light quality is again on color. Audio, we can call this the beeper or the buzzer. So if you, if the meh turns you crazy after every time you, you press the button on your camera, this one, uh, you can actually switch it off and then you don't have this audio ready signal anymore. Last but not least, we have a function called free mask alternate. Actually, there are two functions are packed into this. So let's go there. First, free mask. I press free mask. And we use this function actually to detach an object from the background. And I have to define which 
lights are my main exposure, which lights are used for the, the normal picture, and which lights are used to produce the mask. The mask is just, let's say, like a contour picture. Most of the time it's just light on the background, rather bright, rather even, and a black object. And then I can actually import this mask in, in Photoshop and in post-production. It's a very easy technique to actually detach your object from the background. Okay, main, let's say my light numbers, number one and two are the main, so main light number one and two, and for the mask I use the background, which is my light number three and four, and I press apply. Now they are, let's say, firing alternating. First these two, which means I get my normal picture, and then these two, which is my background to create the mask. So main light, background, main light, mask, main light, mask, and so on. If you do this fast enough, it even works on on moving objects, okay, let's say a portrait, if your model isn't moving too fast, um, you can very fast create the normal portrait and the mask, the contour picture for later on. Okay, that's free mask. And let's go to alternate. Alternate means I can actually fire the, all the units connected uh, in a row, alternating, okay? So let's say this one fires first, then this one, then this one, then this one. The main reason to do this actually is to reduce the recycling time. Especially when I work on very high power settings. Um, Zeros L from the battery still maybe needs half a second, one second to recycle. If this is too slow, if I need it faster, I can use alternate. Let's say this one is my the first light that should fire, so this is active, active, then this one has to wait once, wait one, wait two, and my number four is wait three. Again, I press apply, and now this data is transferred, and now when I press the test button, this one will fire with the next synchro signal, this one, this one, this one. Okay, like this you can have unbelievable fast uh, recycling times. In a setup, you can have them, like let's say in this situation, all very close to each other. So they have, um, yeah, they illuminate basically the same area. So it's like one unit with an unbelievable fast recycling time. Or you can have as well them directing to different spots on your set. So let's say if there is somebody running by, an athlete or whatever, you can have one flash for this position, one flash for this position, tack, tack, and bam, 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 bam. You can make this very, very fast, so there are actually no restrictions, even the fastest camera can be working on a very high frame rate and zeros still follows you. And this is the, the alternate function, okay? And to get rid of the alternate function, we just have to, have to press alternate again, that free mask and alternate are black, apply, wait until this data is actually transferred, and as soon as this happens, I'm back in normal mode. Okay, that's it. That's all I wanted to explain about the, the more functions of the individual units and as well in the studio. Um, amazing possibilities, a lot of creativity hidden in these functions, so enjoy playing with it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>